Sealed versus ported speaker designs. Hmm, we've been here before, but we'll talk about it again. This question comes from Gallo in St. Cloud, Florida. And he writes, I'm waiting patiently to hear your speaker designs. <laughs> hey, Gallo, me too. <laughs> I'm from Florida and might have to take a trip to your place when the speakers are done, and you would be most welcome. Please do. We, we love, love having visitors show up. And, and they do almost, almost daily now. So feel free to come. And I, I apologize for the noise. I didn't realize the cleaning crew was getting started. Well, we'll work our way through it. Um, but talking about speakers, I know you'll be using servo subwoofers. And here's my question. Will you be using passive radiators, base ports, or any, uh, uh, and, and or a sealed or open box for them? And why did you choose one option or, uh, uh, over the other? And also, let's see what else he has to say here, sorry. I'm more prepared. Uh, oh, what are the differences in those designs? Okay, so uh, before we get started, I wanted to just uh, show you Music Room 3. As you probably know, in our new building where we're at, we're building three new music rooms. Music Room 1, which is what we, all we ever really had, where the IRSs are, is now being converted into a massive research area for speakers, and it'll be our premier listening room. And then next to it, uh, behind these studs here, will be Music Room 2, which is where the IRS will be kept. And this is Music Room 3, and when you come to visit us, once this is all done, you'll, you'll come in first into Music Room 3, and then you can see there's a long hall here, and that goes to the other music rooms. This area is going to be our more affordable uh, entry area where we'll have our speakers, our entry level speakers called the AN3s in music room three and a stellar stack and it'll, it'll look very much like a living room. We're, we're gonna make this without any kind of acoustic treatment, anything, you know, it won't be audiophile at all. And the reason is we wanna show people that you don't, thank you. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to have audiophile stuff to sound amazing. You can, with the proper design of speakers uh, and electronics, you can have a standard living room and it, it'll just knock your socks off. And then they can come in and hear you know, the wacky stuff over here. All right, so ported versus speaker uh, sealed box or passive radiators. Well, just to be clear, and we've talked about this before, a passive radiator looks like a speaker. Sometimes it's flat, sometimes it's a cone, but it's essentially a woofer without a motor. And it's a covering over a port, and it has different characteristics of a port, and a lot of designers like to use that as opposed to a port. So a port is a hole in the loudspeaker that is usually tuned and is there to increase the amount of bass at a certain frequency and usually designed to relieve some of the inner pressure of, caused by the woofer. And I, I'm not a big fan of ported designs, and if we can get away with it, we don't use ports. We certainly are not going to use a ported design in the new uh, Arnie Nudell series, uh, the, the one, the two, and the three. No, those will all be sealed, and, and there's another reason why. As you mentioned, we're building servo woofers into here. So quickly, a servo woofer is the ultimate woofer, and, uh, especially in a subwoofer, and, and we'll probably apply it to the mid-bass coupler as well. But that's just another woofer that's you know, in a four-way system. A servo is an accelerometer or some kind of measurement device that measures the instantaneous movement of the cone and then compares it to the input signal and gives a difference signal to correct the woofer's erroneous movements. Because as you can imagine, woofers uh, would, that, that are certainly heavy compared to say a very light tweeter, woofers don't do what they're told. Um, like a car, when you first step on the gas, it doesn't do anything and it 
uh, it kind of has to get moving until you get some inertia, some motion going. And then when you try and step on the brakes, it doesn't quite stop, does it? It keeps going, and you have to really apply power or braking to slow it down. Well, woofers are no different. When a heavy cone woofer is told to get started, it hesitates for a moment, and then it starts going. And then when it's told to stop and come back the other direction, it keeps going, which is called overhang. And a servo-controlled woofer fixes those problems, lowers distortion by a factor of about 10. Now, that requires a sealed, it requires a tough word, it's best in a sealed box because then we can control uh, all the parameters that um, are necessary to control and that's very important in this system. One other thing I'm going to mention in our upcoming speakers, all the speakers are four ways and in the bottom end in the, the servo-controlled woofer, there's also going to be DSP, digital signal processing, like you might see in a home theater, right? Because one of the problems is, imagine if we're gonna set up our speakers here, and there's a place here or there, wherever we're gonna set them up, we're imaging the ability of the speaker to produce uh, a, a, a sonic hologram that is divorced from the loudspeaker enclosures themselves, when you do that, um, there's a certain place that's fairly easy to find in the room, and it doesn't take a whole lot of setup to just get them, if you follow them, and we'll have pretty good instructions. And you set them there, you futz around, maybe we'll have some material that you play and try and get the voice to sound like this, at this height, blah, blah, blah. The problem that you have is once you find that sweet spot for imaging, it's likely not the best spot for bass. So traditionally, when you're doing speaker setup, it's always a compromise. It's, you know, it images great here, but now it doesn't have any bass, or it's got great bass and now it doesn't image, or the tonal balance is off, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna fix both those problems. One, by using DSP, you'll have a little calibration microphone, you set it at your seat and you go boom, and the woofers will automatically correct for the room. Bingo, done. Now, what about tonality? Well, one of the other problems you have in getting perfect imaging is that where they are may not be the best place for tonal balance and that's where the mid-bass coupler comes in. We have a variable mid-bass coupler and you're just gonna turn this pot on the this volume control on the mid-bass coupler according to our instructions and get that dialed in perfect so that all of a sudden setup for the speaker becomes bonehead easy and frankly that's one of the toughest jobs and one of the biggest problems in all of high-end system setup is getting the speakers to sound right. And the new series that PS Audio is gonna be building sometime in 2019 is gonna solve that problem in those ways using sealed boxes. So, uh, sorry if it was a, a, a bit long-winded, didn't mean for it to be salesy, but that's what we're doing and that's why we're doing it. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow, bye.